Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you today. The price of XRP is rocking strong out here this morning. We're going to talk about NFTs is going to change the face of the music industry. Don't believe it. It's still true. Cardano gets major approval from Japan. We'll talk about for what? Standard Chartered News and Fidelity is now carrying the torch. Come on in for crypto. Did you forget about GameStop, oil, and the largest meat producer cyber attacks? Well, don't, because we're going to show you something very important to that, and it lines up with the narrative we've been talking about. And we're also going to get an update from the very, very important U.S. infrastructure bill. Here's a clue. Crypto amendments are holding it up. SEC's Hester Peirce talks DeFi. You're going to want to know about it. And the CTO, David Schwartz from Ripple, tells us what's coming, and it's massive. And you know what else is massive? The price predictions coming for XRP as well. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove and everything that we're talking about here today. Looking right now at $1.808 trillion cryptocurrency market. Remember, $2.5 trillion plus was what we've seen for the high for cryptocurrency markets. Still a lot of old money missing is the point. But nevertheless, about 50 plus billion has moved into the market from yesterday. So that, I believe, helps to understand what's going on with the market. Bitcoin, well over $44,000 this morning. Ethereum now back over $3,000 at $3,100 plus. Cardano at one forty seven, and it's still climbing. And XRP is at $0.80 cents this morning. Let's go ahead and look at the range of XRP. And we will get some XRP price predictions on what's going on with the price. Before we get out of here today, we're going to hear from Coins Kid and another technical analyst before we leave here and it's 80 cents right now low range has been 7701 the high side of the xrp price range 8373 so we'll keep an eye on it remember it does go up and down things happen in waves right so right here we see bond crypt xrp tells us he's a hall of famer the music revolution is minted Music NFTs are increasing the excitement for space exploration. NFTs balance out the financial tension between musicians, distribution companies. Musician boosts earning by promoting music scarcity <clears throat> Excuse me, through NFTs. And I have said this before, I do believe NFTs are going to change the face for music online. I really, really do. And it's been high time that it happened because the music industry and intellectual property alike has suffered greatly from the Internet of Information with the lack of the ability to contain the ownership online for music. So, by the way, you can check out bandroyalty.com. That is a website that is doing, I think, great things for music, and it allows the fans of music to actually buy a token and participate in a song pools and, and uh, royalty pools that you can choose for different artists, and you can earn royalties along with your favorite artist. How about that one? Bandroyalty.com. This is big here for Cardano. Shout out to Charles Hoskinson and Michael Val Five Links tells us uh, it just became one of the rare tokens that succeeded to receive approval to be listed on crypto exchanges in Japan. Yeah, shout out to Charles and the team over there. I love Cardano and what he's doing. I love the way he talks about crypto and the things he's pursuing. Here we see Bond Crypt here, Standard Chartered Crypto Brokerage Zodia Custody plans to offer its services to institutional investors in Ireland. Well, 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 well. Right. More evidence, just like we've seen with J.P. Morgan, just like we've seen with Goldman Sachs. They're going to offer it to their biggest clients first because that's the way the cookie crumbles. Right. They get the main part of the cookie and everybody else like us gets the crumbs. And it's confirmed here by Fidelity's president of digital assets. Fidelity Digital Assets, the crypto arm of Fidelity Investments, says the crypto is its own unique asset class. He revealed we and others are very engaged with regulators to bring this asset class into the mainstream. We appreciate you carrying the baton there. So looking here, 
This is a reminder as we go into the next few pieces of news here, just how important distributed ledger technology is. Remember in the opener of this video, I asked you, did you forget about GameStop? Did you forget about the oil cyber attack? Did you forget about the largest meat producer getting a cyber attack? Did you forget about the large IT company that had 10 or 11,000 companies that had a cyber attack? What does it all speak to? Market manipulation for GameStop and about how vulnerable and antiquated the markets are. The payment rails for the markets, all of it, right? Then we had the oil. Now, oil, food, and the IT for 10,000 plus businesses. Look at the narrative there. Your oil, your food was attacked, right? And then the largest companies with the IT company there out of that 10 or 11,000 that they service attacked. Everything is antiquated and vulnerable. Something must be done now. An update to the what? Infrastructure. The market infrastructure. Well, it's no surprise. And that brings us right here to this $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill, which has moved closer to passing. And I've been talking about this on this channel. If you've been with me, you know this. I've been telling you that those things were narratives and going to become narratives by the people that can actually get the work done to incentivize them to understand that we, we don't have a choice. There is no choice here. You either make the upgrades or the attacks are going to get worse and more often. It says here, but senators still need to address two competing cryptocurrency related amendments that seek to clarify tax reporting requirements. We go on to understand this. Two senators introduced pro-crypto amendment to infrastructure bill. Industry says it's not enough. Listen to this. Jake Trevinsky, who has been at that, I mean, right in the center of all of this, working just as hard as Ron Hammond and everyone else, and shout out to them, two sitting U.S. senators walking onto the floor having serious crypto discussions about tax provisions, dealing with decentralized consensus mechanisms. Did you hear that? Well, what do you think the XRP ledger is? Dealing with decentralized consensus mechanisms, which is holding up a key piece of legislation on the front page of every major newspaper in the country. Yeah, they're talking about DeFi also, but remember, the XRP ledger is a decentralized exchange that uses consensus. Michelle Bond, formerly of Ripple, says the revised Warner-Portman Amendment is an 11th hour attempt to put an end to DeFi in the United States and give other countries the opportunity to fill our innovation and leadership void. Mm. It is yet another attempt to undermine digital asset markets and in, if, in an infrastructure bill, no less. Go ahead, Michelle. How do you really feel? This is why I've urged you guys to please call this number. They're supposed to get back at it at 12 o'clock today. But listen, it doesn't matter that it's a weekend or that it's Sunday. Call this number, 517-200-9518. It will ask you to put in your zip code, and it will directly route you from that phone call to your representative, to your senator that represents your zip code. It will do it for you. And while it's doing it, it will tell you the number of the bill to say HR 3684 and what to exactly ask for to make sure that we don't get screwed before they actually put this thing through. Do not think that tweeting and retweeting is enough or walking around your house and bitching to a buddy or a family member. It doesn't solve the problem. You got to call. Here we see SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce believes that DeFi founders only hope to bypass financial regulation is to ensure full decentralization from launch. Well, yeah, you know, it's so funny. Uh, I'm going to go right to here and Hester Peirce, known as Crypto Mom in the United States Securities Exchange Commission, has warned of rampant shadow centralization within DeFi sector. Speaking to outspoken DeFi watch founder Chris Bleck, 
uh, in Wednesday's discussion by the Defiant, the SEC commissioner noted that decentralized organizations in DeFi are new concepts for regulators and that having a peer-to-peer system that does not have central intermediaries is very different from what we're normally dealing with. If you want to be decentralized, you really need to be decentralized. And that is going to then put you in a different category from the perspective of regulators because that's not just something we've dealt with before. So she's clearly telling you anything that we've looked at out here now is not actually decentralized in her her eyes, right? If regulators can find a centralized part or group of people that they can grab a hold of, they will grab a hold of them. So I think it's just good to be cautious about how you build things because down the road, it could have regulatory implications, she added. Black asked for uh, Purse's opinion on the best route for developing decentralized protocols. And of course, they really can't tell you because that's the problem, right? Asking if founders should strive to reach the same level of decentralization as Bitcoin or start to build really cautiously and then running towards regulation to avoid running afoul of the law. The commissioner said that existing regulations have been designed so that any entity or person that is involved in the financial industry is probably going to come under at least one regulatory framework. And look, if anything, if I could say here, right, is that this is where Hester Peirce's safe harbor rule could really come into play here. If they bring this in, then it would give that three-year safe harbor window for them to say, look, this is what our intentions are. We're filing the papers. You know, they get the safe harbor rule, and you've got three years to get whatever it is accomplished. And if you don't, the SEC gets to revisit it. That's just a thought, but I think that's really what they're leaning into there. Now, looking here, this is a reminder Bank of England has been working with Ripple for years, so that is not breaking news. What I'm showing here is a reminder, right, and how cumulative the work that has been done by Ripple. And it is massive, and we're not going to peel it all back today because you can't do it in one video. But I do want to remind people here, here is the paper that we've covered many different times on the channel um, from Bank of England back in 2016, right? So not breaking news, but this is cumulative to show you how important what we're doing is. Again, you know, uh, Bank of England has been a partner with Ripple for years. And here's a reminder here where they show an example of from PayPal to Ripple as they show Stripe to Square or Apple to Zap, right? These these things all show us something. And this whole entire paper was about really testing payments and all of these things, right? Un- unbundling banking, that kind of business. But that all reminds us of what we covered, I don't know, a month ago when we talked about the Digital Dollar Pound Foundation. Well, there's some more people kicking that back up because they've come across it too. Shout out to Bond Crypt for this. And Bobo, I believe, shared it the other day. But this is a reminder here that it's not just Ripple Labs, it's Susan Friedman from Ripple, who's also head of public policy that's on this Digital Pound Foundation. Let's take a listen here. Go on to Digital Pound Foundation Limited on Company House again and click on People. Scroll down until you get to Susan Friedman. As we can see, Susan's role in the company is a director. She was appointed on the 22nd of June 2021. Her nationality is American and her country of residence is the United States. If we do a quick Google search on Susan Friedman, we come across this page. As you can see, Susan has ties with Ripple and is actually a part of the International Policy Council. And there you have it. So it's a great reminder of where we're going, the Digital Pound Foundation. It reminds me of something very similar to the Digital Dollar Project here in the United States by Chris John Carlo. What's interesting is, is understanding that Ripple is a part of that Digital Pound Foundation and right down to the connection between Susan Friedman as well. Again, not breaking news, but it's just reinforcing what David Schwartz is going to tell us in his most recent uh, ripple drop. Listen to this right here about central banks and federated side chains. Check it out. In terms of application, uh, how soon could we see federated side chains on the XRP ledger? Ripple's been focusing on private federated side chains for central banks a lot uh, because we think that's one of the most obvious immediate use cases. I think you'll probably see those in a couple of months. How about that? What do you think about that? Federated side chains for central banks. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? 
uh, whether or not central banks will actually use them, but the technology. That's pretty modest. How many companies actually say, you know what, um, we're going to build something, but we're not really sure if there's a market for it. <laughs> will be there and then i think seeing real centralized federated sidechains to provide features like DeFi is probably more like six to nine months away there you go six to nine months away for DeFi as well so that's exciting and i feel like regulation may come somewhere in between that six to nine months too hopefully in a perfect world which we're not in but nevertheless i think what's interesting about this is is listen i know i'm being flipped but the reality is is you know there's not a lot of people making uh cars with helicopters that turn into helicopters. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but apparently there's no real market for it yet. So they're not building them, right? And if they are, it's one-off stuff. You see what I mean, right? How many cars out here are selling because there's a market for them to go underwater? I mean, these things are all cool, but there's no real market for it. So it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean there isn't any. It's just no one's building any. It's the reason Ripple's not working on underwater basket weaving, right? Because there isn't a demand for it. Right. But there is a demand for federated side chains for central banks. Come on in. Now let's talk about price. Right. XRP Shark here says things are about to get interesting again for XRP. Can't wait for it to break its all time high in the coming months. Pumping very or pump very hard and shut up. Everyone who doubted it and sold during this retrace bull market it is not done. In the coming months, the coming months will be a lot of fun. Well, he's not the only one. And if we take a look here at what, we're, what he's actually citing here, he's showing some incredible stuff that could take us really from where we are all the way up to $20 plus. Now that is pretty damn exciting. And I really, I tell you, I've got room on the calendar for it. I just want to be clear here. You know? And let me tell you who else is telling us we got some good news coming to us. If patience is your thing you won't have any time any trouble at all waiting for it to unfold let's listen right here to coins kid ladies and gentlemen give them a give him a follow One hundred eighty thousand subscribers i'm so glad to see him grow and he does an amazing work you're going to find out right now listen to what he says about these price points and price targets to pay attention to i want to show you something that p t potentially xrp is forming right here on a larger time frame because all this is chop okay all this is chop like this and then you do something like that and then you come up again and then you come up to this level of resistance right here what are you creating what are you creating just there you're creating a massive 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 um head uh, cup and handle pan so you might get rejected at that point fall back have a large retracement potentially down to the zero three eight three uh, from a dollar perspectively this is a future play where you would have a massive massive breakout of a level of resistance it would look bad everyone think we're going to zero but when you break out of that this is where you're going to absolutely come up from this level of resistance which i do anticipate this particular level just here in the future not necessarily now at one dollars four that's going to come into play as a major level of resistance look because resistance resistance you rolled over so you're going to come up against it at some point right and when you do you're going to roll back and you probably come to a key level of support because it works in waveforms remember that key level of support primarily it could be the 083 we'll look at it when the time comes and at that point you create this big cup and handle pattern and from there you've got the breakout target and you will be looking at a one dollar 58 uh, xrp token and you know at that point that's pretty incredible and what i want to say really quickly is so if you notice just to just to some uh uh wrap it here real quick here between 99 cent and a dollar four is going to be a key resistance area for XRP. If that hits and bounces back, it goes along with what would be forming the cup and handle and natural to see a retracement, he's saying. You could come all the way back to the 83 cent mark, right? It may even go as hard as coming back and test that uh, support line at 78 cents. So should we be shocked when we see this price begin to roll over? No. We should be shocked if it blows through the 78 cent mark, <laughs> right? So there we go. And if it does, we could come all the way back down to 70 cents again. And if it breaks that, we could be going into a downside, right? So looking at this, he's basically saying we could go up and test that 99 cent dollar plus range. But we expect a, you're going to have to expect, expect a sell off and a correction here. Right. And then you're going to have to get the steam again. And once you get the steam again, we can go up and hit that dollar fifty plus. 
Now, to me, the important thing to remember is what he stresses so often is that these things happen in waves. I mean, look at here, up, down, down, up, down. You know, you see how it works, right? It's not, it's not fun to watch all the time, right? Because, you know, it isn't just all green candles. You know, there's a huge wave thing that we have to take in mind here, which really starts to bring in for me the clarity to be patient, right? Be like, hey, or the awareness for me to be patient, because I'm excited to see a, a really great price for XRP too. But ultimately, while I watch this price action happen, and I am very excited about a dollar and dollar plus and new all-time highs, and, you know, five plus, nine plus, thirteen dollars and twenty-seven dollars, all of it I'm excited about, but I am here for four and five digit XRP. So this is fun to watch until then. And that's how I keep my patience because ultimately we're not even close to what I know will happen. And what I think will take us to the four and five digits is exactly what we heard from David Schwartz, right? When he talked about the federated side chains for central banks. Now, once they get using those and they connect to those and then they begin actually working on that uh, network in a full intended use, then I think we start talking about some of the stuff that I'm actually here for, which I'm here for all of it, good or bad, and I'm not leaving till we get it. That is for damn sure, but that's where we are on this day. Okay, before we get out of here, make sure you check out Pure VPN. It's one of the many different ways that I help hide my anonymity online, and I like it. And I think they got a 99 cent seven day trial. Make sure you check them out. And Ledger Nano, make sure you check them out. They always have great deals, but you got to make sure you use the links in the description and comment box because you know what? They're trusted, vetted links of products and services I use each and every day. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch all of you on the next one.